So I want you to implement this motion model. And for that I have prepared some code for you. So the code consists of a main function and the filter step. And you will have to implement this filter step. The filter step gets the old pose, which consists of x, y and the heading. And it gets the motor ticks, left and right. And it has to implement the motion equations for the two cases. The first case is the motor ticks, left and right, are the same. In that case, the robot just drives straight. And if not, the robot drives along a curve segment. And you'll have to implement that case too. And these are the formulas we just discussed. And I prepared a main function for you. There's the constant we just discussed, the ticks to millimeter conversion factor. Another constant is the width of the track in millimeters. And the main function does all the opening of the file and the processing for all the motor ticks. So here it opens the log file, it reads in the motor ticks, then it starts at a given pose. So since I do not know the pose, I just say it is at x, 0, y, 0, and with a heading of 0. And then I start to construct the list of the filtered positions. For all ticks in the motor ticks, I just call this filter step function, the one up here, which you'll have to implement. And the filter step function takes the pose, takes the ticks, and computes the new pose. And then the new pose is just appended to this list. And then in the end, I do two things. I print out all the positions and orientations. And I also, in addition, do a plot. So now let's have a look at what the program does after you implemented the filter step function. So I'll just run it. And this is what happens. The program prints a long list of x, y heading values. So if I scroll back, these are the first values. At the start of the experiment, uh, the robot stands still. So it is at 0, 0 with heading 0. And at the beginning, the motors are not turning. And for the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. For the first 13 time steps, the robot stands still. And then it starts to accelerate and it goes straight. Since the heading is along the x-axis, it goes into x-direction and it accelerates. And then, as you remember, with the third value here, the left and right ticks are a little bit different, so it starts to turn a little bit that the heading here switches to a value of something like 2 pi. So when you implement this, make sure that you have those 13 zeros here and then the same values as you can see here. But the program does not only output those values, it also draws a figure. So here's the figure it draws and you can see the robot starts at 0, 0 with heading along the x-axis theta equals zero and then it moves and does a left turn and so you see for the first time you see the trajectory that the robot is moving in the arena. So now try to implement this, have a look at the graphics and make sure that you get the correct values as they are shown here.